Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan and in this video I want to give you a tutorial and a little guidance on how to play a dozen a day primary or preliminary book one group two exercises. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you like what you see give this video a thumbs up. This video is part of a series. I'm going to do all five groups from this book and all books. So if you're looking for a different set of exercises from a dozen a day, then links are going to be in the description below. Let's start with exercise one, stretching. So as we can see, stretching is all about octaves. Now, this exercise can be done two ways, depending on how big your hands are. If your hands are big enough to reach an octave, which is C to C, then it's going to look like this. So that means that you can stretch between the notes, but if you have smaller hands or if you're very young, then you will have to jump between the notes, which makes it harder. And the whole point of this exercise is to kind of engrave that distance of the octave into your hands and arms so your hands will know where to go where to land when you move an interval of an octave so when you practice just really try to go between the two c's whether you can reach it whether you can't reach it and the more you do the exercise you should be able to do it without looking at your hands and your hands should memorize the distance between the two c's so starting middle c right hand octave higher, left hand middle C, octave down, then both thumbs on the middle C, octave up, and an octave up and down. So very simple, but doing it very slowly in the beginning to try to memorize the distance between the octaves. Exercise two, tiptoe running. This one is almost completely identical to running from group one, but this time it's going to be staccato, so very short and detached notes. I'm going to demonstrate it first and then I'll talk you through how to approach it. First of all, let's get through the notes without staccatos. So starting on C, middle C, left hand on the low C, it's a five note scale going up and down. Then a three note scale, C, C. Then repeat five note scale going up, coming down, three note scale and finish on the C. Now, as I said in the group one exercises, when you do scales or rising falling motions, do wrist circles. So the hand has to follow the shape, go up and down, up and down. So don't do it like this. Follow that melody. and let the hands move. Curve the fingers, raise the hand above the keys, make sure you have a very soft, relaxed wrist, and then try the exercise. Now, once you can do the notes and the rhythms fairly confidently, then you can start the staccato. Now, the staccato is going to be finger staccato, so flicking the keys like they're really hot, like a stove. We don't need too much motion from the arm, it's mostly from the fingers and just flicking the keys very quickly and keeping the hands really relaxed and soft. And making sure the two hands work absolutely together so you don't hear anything like this. Separation between the two hands, perfectly together, curved hands and accuracy. It doesn't have to be loud. Number three, jumping off the front porch steps. So this one is going to be again similar to the first exercise, so kind of estimating the distance between two positions on the keyboard, but instead of going from a single note we're going to go from a C major chord. So let me show you first. So we start in a C major chord position, C, E, G, 1, 3, 5, C, E, G, 1, 3, 5. Let's just leave the staccato for now. Let's play the chords first. And then we're going to lift up and move down to the two Cs. So an octave movement to the two Cs. You can use any finger on the two Cs as long as you can 
catch it quickly and you stay consistent. It doesn't have to be any specific number. Now, once you practice the motion between these C chords and Cs, we're going to get the whole body. It's going to be a forearm staccato. So the whole body goes in and land. So bounce up a big circle and land. When you bounce, the hand is going to do, it's not like a quick motion, it's a bounce and a circle and land, and up and land. So you have to kind of imagine it's like going up a hill and coming down. And that's the whole exercise. It's basically getting that nice motion of transitioning between two sections, getting the forearm staccato, the whole body has to be channeled into those chords very accurately again not like this, but all six notes at the same time, and land. And that's jumping off the front porch steps. Number four is climbing up a ladder. Now this one is very good. It Let me show you first the right hand, so number four. So as you can see, I'm climbing up, but I have a lot of finger changes. We're working in two groups, one, three, and two, four. So what I would suggest, first of all, is to play the exercise blocked. So play each two notes together, one, three, and then the next two notes, two, four. Then one, three again, then two, four, then one, three, two, four, one, three, and two. And now let's break it. One, three, two, four. And now I'm going to put one here instead of the three. One, three, two, four. One, three, two, four. One, three, two. So go up a skip, come down a step. Go up a skip, come down a step. Go up a skip, up a skip, down a step. Now the key thing here again is to let the hand move and rotate a little bit with, uh, between these intervals. So never let the hand be too static with these exercises or in piano playing in general. And then when you can do the thumb crossings and the finger changes fairly confidently, you can go a little bit faster. And I would even do a crescendo as I go up, getting louder and rounding off that last note in the exercise. Number five is the exact same going down a ladder and that's for the left hand. So starting number one, it's going to be the mirror of the right hand. So going down one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four, one, three, two. Down a skip, up a step, down a skip, up a step, and when you get to number four, you put number one again. Creating complete smoothness, evenness, fluidity. Do not lift up your hand anywhere like this. Try to keep it really legato, very connected. And that's going to help you develop a very smooth thumb crossing. Number six, jumping like a frog. Now this one is about ornaments and this one specifically is a grace note and more specifically it's an acciaccatura, which is a very quick grace note. And as you can see, each big note is preceded by a small note which is crossed out and that's an ornament and we play them really quickly because they are crossed out. So we, we think of them as not even counted just like a very quick note. So I'll show you how it goes. So the left hand starts on the C, then a G, and then a C. Then right hand C, G, and C. The ornament is going to be the previous key. So the, the key before C is B. And we're going to do this extremely quickly. But not at the same time like this. Okay, so quickly and jump up. 
drop and bounce. Drop and bounce. As quickly as you can. The next one is G, so the note before is F sharp, not F, F sharp. And then back to B. Right hand repeats, B, number two and number three. F sharp and B. The rhythm is one, rest, one, rest, one, rest, 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 one, rest, one, rest, one, rest, rest, rest. So bouncing up nicely at the end and making those ornaments not too strong, but very, very quick. Number seven, hanging from bar by right hand. This one is called, I call it double voicing or multiple voicing, which basically means that one hand is playing the music that's meant to be for two hands. It's not technically correct what I'm saying, but the easiest way to imagine it. So as we can see, there is a G semi breve or whole note at the top and we've got four crotchets or quarter notes in the bottom. So those two melodies are overlapping and we have eight beats all together. So the way it works is we have to hold down that G while we play the bottom notes. So let me show you first. What I did, I was playing five G, number one on the C. Let's play the top section first, just the semi breathes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, because there is a tie. The bottom half starts with a rest. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's combine the two together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So make sure you hold down this little outer finger while you play the C's. Don't let it come up like this. You need to hold it. Now don't push it so strong as it makes your finger hurt. It has to be gentle, but in the beginning you will have to push quite strongly if you haven't done this before, because the finger will want to come up, especially because that's your weak finger. So it takes a little bit of training and practice to be able to keep it down without too much pressure. Number eight is hanging from bar by left hand, which is the exact same thing, but for the left hand. So I'm not going to explain this again. I just show you starting five on the C, one on the G. And this time the strong finger is going to hold. And that's it. Same idea, same logic, same technique, but for an opposite finger combination. Number nine, hanging from bar with both hands. So as the name says, this one combines number seven and number eight. So right hand starting five on the G, left hand one on the G, right hand one on the C, left hand five on the C, holding down the Gs, one, two, three, four, And that's it. Now I would suggest to try this exercise inverted. So the same two notes, but holding down the C. And the reason for that is because when you do G to C, the, the weak finger is being trained here and the strong finger, but the left hand weak finger is not getting the same practice. So if we invert the exercise and go from C to G, then we're going to train the other two fingers as well and both hands are going to be equally well practiced. Exercise number 10, playing with a yo-yo. Here it is. So it's a five finger exercise in the left hand, but instead of going up and down, it's going down and up. So kind of a backwards motion and as I said, in any kind of scale exercise, wrist circles, letting the hand move with the notes and 
curving the fingers, lifting the hand above the keys and very soft wrist. It's all quavers, so the rhythm is very continuous all the way through. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And finishing on the C. The right hand is just holding an E all the way through a semi-brief whole note and you have to re-strike the note every bar. Now make sure you lift up the E maybe uh, at the last quaver so you have enough time to re-strike it exactly together with the C. Number 11, swinging. This one is a little bit more interesting. It's, I think, slightly more challenging. So in group one, we had cartwheels, which was hand crossing. And here we have hand crossing, but it goes back and forth. Let me show it to you first. So as you could see, the left hand was doing these beautiful rounded circles around the right hand. And again, that's a hand crossing, but it comes back and forth, but the right hand is not crossing anywhere. This time it's staying in the same position, but the left hand is moving around. Now, any kind of hand crossing exercise, you have to make sure that the hand is not doing like very swift, abrupt motions. It's timed so you can do it continuously and evenly. So that's actually a good exercise would be to keep your hand, the right hand in the C position and just move the left hand across and count. One, two, one, two, one, two. To feel that fluency, how the hand is crossing over and coming back. The right hand has two chords. It has a C, C, E, G and then it has B, D, F, one, two, four, and coming back to C in the last uh, section. Left hand starts five on the low G, right. Left hand crosses over to the A. Coming back, right hand, G again, right hand, A, coming back, G, and now the next chord, G, and C. Now, when you get the circles nice and smooth, don't forget that you cannot have any gaps between the two hands. So what that means is you have to make it feel like one hand is playing this entire melody. It's not broken up between two hands like this. That sounds very abrupt and it doesn't sound like it's uh, welded together. So you're holding down the left hand note until the right hand presses down the first note. So perfect legato making sure one hand blends into the next one. And that's how you can make this exercise very pretty. Number 12, fit as a fiddle and ready to go. Very similar to group one, fit as a fiddle, but a little bit more complicated left hand. We've got two chords, let me play it first. Now again, you can play this legato, connected or detached, doesn't really matter. The left hand has two chords, C and E with three, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two on the F, G. One, two, three, four, and back to the C chord. Next line, exactly the same. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right hand melody starting on the C position. One, two, three, four. 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 
So just skips and steps, basically side reading a little melody. Hands together, make sure they strike the first note of the bar perfectly together. And that's the end of exercise 12. Don't forget, all of the exercises in this first book can be transposed. And by that, I mean, for example, the hanging from a bar. You can play the exercise and then move up your hand one note to the right. So from C to G position to D and A and repeat just by looking at the intervals or the finger patterns. Then go up again. Up again and you can do this with any exercise so all you need to do is play the exercise and then move up your hand both hands one note to the right the same finger numbers and play the exercise on a new set of keys with the same patterns and the same intervals if you have any more questions about does in a day leave them in the comments thank you very much for watching and as always subscribe for more